Welcome back to today's final Splash of Paint, where it's time for us to share more top tips from some of your favourite celebrity artists. This week we join Jeremy Ford as he spreads his secret ingredient for making your palettes look brand new. Hi, today I'm going to show you how to clean an old palette. Look at this palette, it's a bit dirty isn't it? You know it's seen better days than that. And uh, some of the colours in here uh, are, are very powerful staining colours like Permanent Rose and uh, Tropical Phthalo Blue, Prussian Blue, those kind of colours can stain a palette really badly. This is just a, a simple plastic palette. All you need is a bit of kitchen roll or a rag and either oil uh, of any description, uh, butter or margarine something greasy. So you just uh, get a little bit onto your kitchen roll like that, there's a bit on the plate and you don't need a great deal and then just work it around the palette. Like that. Use a bit of elbow grease as well, that helps a bit. And you can see how it's coming off onto the kitchen roll. So you get a bit more, not for reconsumption and just work it around like that and you can see more is coming off. There's no way that you can stop the, uh, the plastic from uh, becoming stained um, but uh, you can just keep on cleaning it every so often when it gets really really bad. Uh, if, and if you've got a, a really uh, heavily stained palette it's very difficult sometimes to see exactly how the colour uh, that you're mixing in the palette looks, particularly if it's a, a pale, delicate, watery colour. Uh, so cleaning it every now and then isn't a bad idea. So just get a little bit more and work that around a bit more. Some can be a bit more stubborn than others. I'll put a little bit more on that, just leave that for a minute and try that pink there as well. Yeah, so the pink's coming off a bit too. And a bit more. Use another piece of kitchen roll, hang the expense. And uh, when you're finished uh, with that, um, you know, don't forget to wash the palette uh, in some um, hot soapy water. Uh, otherwise, the grease from the oil or the margarine or the butter uh, will uh, come off on your brushes um, and uh, you don't want to make your picture all greasy, do you? So there we go. There's the palette, which is considerably cleaner than it was before I started. And if you keep on persevering, it will get cleaner and cleaner. But hot soapy water uh, when you're finished and then uh, just dry it with kitchen roll or let it drain. And uh, there you've got a nice clean palette again. Nice little use for a simple household essential. Thanks, Jeremy. Now, before we answer another question from the Splash of Paint post bag, we've just got time to pop down to the farm with Marilyn Alice and see how charcoal can help capture a colourful rooster with a few simple strokes. This is just a hint for drawing very loosely but very quickly. Sometimes it, you can get quite tight and fiddly and spend too much time on detail. Just take a piece of willow charcoal and just draw very, very quickly looking for the main shapes. The rooster has a sort of cone for a head that if you go wrong you can just go into it and correct that just adds to the movement so not a problem all the time just place to see where everything is in line with everything else so you see how quickly i'm doing that if i go wrong it really doesn't matter because i can just correct it like that Bring his chest down a little bit. Let's get those feathers in. Just a few indications, sort of here and there, of those feathers. It comes down there. Nice fat chest. Indications of his feet. 
shadow comes down there. Make sure that out like that. Now his shadow sort of disappears into his back, so we just give him a little diagonal shadow there, just to sort of anchor him down a little bit. Tidy that. Uh, it looks a bit sort of black at the moment, so just a tiny little bit of alizarine crimson for his comb. Nice thick solid paint so it dries nice and dark. There we are. A great way for drawing hens and roosters really quickly. Thanks, Marilyn. Lovely loose style. Perfect for simple outline sketches and movement. Right, it's time to dip into the splashy paint post bag and solve another of your artistic dilemmas. Bob West has emailed in to ask, how do I get rid of hard edges in my watercolour paintings? Well, Bob, I can show you this. You might recognise this from an earlier programme. It's the painting that we did of the flowers obviously. What I'm going to do is just use a little bit of water on a size 6 brush. Tap the excess away, that's always a good little point. And if we want to make this back flower look as though it's slightly out of focus, like if you'd photographed it, you can basically just very carefully go over the hard edges. Now the paint's had plenty of time to dry and it will soften. Now sometimes you might want to get a bit of tissue and just give it a bit of a gentle wipe. Now this is very similar to what we did on the Chatsworth picture at the start of the programme but it's the same basic idea just using the water and I call this a bit of a glazing. You glaze over the top with water. You sometimes have to encourage the background depending on what paper you're working on or even what um, paint you've used for the back because some paint stain obviously and you can see there how it's just if you compare these two edges to this top edge you can see an obvious difference but if I just quickly go around the edge of this give it a bit of encouragement there a really good example of this is if you painted a night time scene you put the moon in the sky which you may mask off and then you could go around the edge of the moon to create that nice diffused glow the hazy moon so we've created a bit of a separation between this and this by going around the edges now sometimes you might need to do a little bit of blending just help it along. And the other way is to dampen the paper first. So at the point of painting, if you want to create a soft edge effect, get a little bit of water on a large brush, not a massive amount of water, and dampen an area down rather than saturate it. So that area is nice and wet. And then if I was to use that same brush and maybe just mix up a little bit of a thick colour. Now the reason for the thick colour is because it will control the flow of paint. So I've got some yellow and blue, that's lemon yellow and natural blue I've used there. And let's say, for example, I wanted to add a bit of an out of focus tree. Take some of the excess off and go in the damp area. And you can see that the paint is spreading, but it's not running too much because the paint was only, um, oh, sorry, the paper was damp, but the paint was thick as well. And if you was doing like a bit of a pine tree or something, you can see just how simple that is. And that will look really effective in the background of a landscape or something like that. So there you go, Bob. There's two ways of avoiding hard edges. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, folks. We hope you've enjoyed getting closer to some of your favourite TV artists and that we've encouraged you to try something new. Join us next week when enthusiastic experimental artist Alison Board demonstrates the wonderful ways that watercolour can be used to paint terrific trees. Sharon Hurst conjures up another magical tip for adding shadows and glazes and popular pencil wizard Malcolm Cudmore helps us look at the world in a little bit of a different way and Paul Beatty shares a simple technique for adding texture to your paintings. So tune in next time for another exciting edition of A Splash of Paint packed full of inspirational advice and top tips to support you on your artistic journey. See you soon. If you'd like to receive a regular splash of paint sign up to the SAA's free e-newsletter visit www.saa.co.uk. We'll make sure you get all the latest news, exclusive offers and events delivered direct to your desktop.